ಹಾಗಾದ್ರೆ I don't I don't cover I don't cover the camera over on my uh, computer because you no know, if they want to watch me doing stuff it's like knock yourself if they want to watch me podcasting knock yourself out if they want to watch no, that's a different that's different I mean I'm just I just slide it over when I'm not on line or on the cameras you know it is a better look <laughs> yes it is it is it's definitely a better look <laughs> I don't I don't slide it over ever it's like you know what yeah if you think you, I'm that important, I, I I would love that. Yeah. Who if, if the the Ruskies think I'm that important that they got to spy on me? Man, I would be like over the moon about that. I know. I give them I'm something. Spy worthy. I'm spy worthy. I'm spy worthy. I'm spy worthy. Exactly. <laughs> oh, uh, man. So we've pushed the button. I pushed yeah, the button about a uh, button's been pushed about a minute ago. I, I, I do have a question I have to ask our uh, upcoming guest. Should I wait till he's introduced? Or... Yeah, wait till he comes out of the okay. green room. Don't ask him yet. Because questions are All good. Right. Questions are good. He's been in there a it, long it, time. It, it, it kind of makes it work, doesn't it? It does. I found that I found these podcasts are the best when we ask questions. Mm. Yeah. Whatever, but uh, well, otherwise, there's a lot of dead air. There's a lot of dead air. <laughs> a lot of dead air. Crickets. Elevator music. Dun, 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 dun. We still need to work on the industrial fan. Uh, mm. I have a great bit for that, but it's just a matter of getting everybody organized and thinking of what people have to say. And and we know that's what we do so well. It'll never happen. It, <laughs> yeah. Getting them organized. Exactly. Because that means, because that means I have to be what? organized. But yeah, exactly. Yeah. That means I have to be organized and, and that's not going to happen. I uh, I don't think people are getting there, or maybe by now they have. This is so long from since. This is probably the spring of 2022. Wow. <laughs> I bet you any money it's the spring of 2022. Or or early winter or late fall. <laughs> <laughs> possibly, possibly 2023? Yeah, uh, poss- and I don't think so. I feel confident. Uh, should, we, should we run a pool on this one? Yeah, okay, what's the over? <laughs> let's, throw, let's throw up on the fans page a pool on when uh, the, the Kelly questions that Joe D'Amato appear. Yeah, smoking Joe D'Amato. Smoking Joe D'Amato. He's our first multi-part interview. Uh, well, how did you think he did last time there when we just kind of caught up with him? I thought it was excellent finding yeah, out what he's doing and learning a little bit more about him that we didn't know from the the ninety seven part interview before. I think I always get the feeling that he's holding out on us. That there's well, he's one of those he's one of those quiet guys that uh, you know he just kind of goes along. He's that does what he has to do. Doesn't like to make a lot of waves, and then all of a sudden, I said, whoa, 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 back the bus up there. What did you just say? You know. <laughs> but I always feel like there's something else I should be asking him. I'm an open book, man. You're in the green room, man. Yeah, you're not talking. <laughs> he's also he apparently he's telepathic. Yeah, yeah apparently, really. so apparently he doesn't do show business. Show business. Show business. I wonder how many times by now I've been on the on the dude show. The last time I was on, right as of we recording this, the last time I was on, I was wearing a bunch of funny hats because it was his birthday. Mm. And nothing says birthday like a bunch of funny hats. Nothing. I had a party on my head. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, smoking Joe. Yeah, yeah smoking Joe. Uh, unfortunately, the viewers won't see this, but it is funny. It is, yeah. All right, let's get him in here. All right, go get him, Kelly. All right, I'll go get him. Yeah. Oh, boy, I got to walk all the way down there. Boy, he's been down, he's been down there. He's been da- Just yell loud enough. Yeah, but it's he. I walked down there, and it's kind of he's been down there for a real long time. It's, it's pretty rank down there right now, man. Hey, Joe, come on up here. <laughs> Hello, there he is. Look, he just tap danced right in. La-da-da. Yeah. 
You know, you know what it just reminded when he came in? Young Frankenstein with they're putting on the Ritz dancing scene. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Got my tux on and everything. Uh, what, <laughs> one day, one day I was nice knockers. One day I wasn't feeling very. <laughs> what did you get from the monster? <laughs> oh. <laughs> and, and how long has that taken us to completely off the rails? Yeah, really. Five uh, five What's minutes and ten. Thank you. Yeah, five minutes. <laughs> <and> ten. <laughs> that, was that, was a great, that was a great movie. What, oh, you, what yeah. movie are yeah. you talking about? Young Frankenstein. Young Frankenstein. Oh. Yeah. oh yeah. Yeah. I can never. I can't remember. Oh. I can't. I, I remember Young Frankenstein, but I don't remember individual lines like people do. I, oh, that one. Yeah, that's what. <laughs> that's full of classics. But what was that? What was the? The maid or the, I guess she was the maid or whatever she was. The Bob housekeeper. Bruker. That was Cla Bob Brooker. <laughs> <laughs> Cloris Leach. That was Cloris Leacherman yeah, and Leach. Madeline, yeah. Con, Madeline Kahn Madeline played, Kahn. played the, yep. the Peter Boy Peter Boyle was young. Peter Boyle was the monster. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Terry Gear. Terry Gear. Terry Gar. 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 Yeah. It was in Love there. Of course, uh, what's his name with the eyes? Well, yeah, the eyes, Marty, uh, Fe Marty, Fel Marty, Marty, Feldman. Marty Feldman. Feldman. Yeah. yeah, I like it yeah. when the when the hump switched humps, but <laughs> yeah. it kept switching yeah. the hump back and forth. <laughs> hey, Joe, have you ever met any famous people? Um, yeah, actually, I have. Okay, who are they? Oh, um, well, um, I can't remember his name now, but he was the guy that, uh, um, one of our customers, he was uh, in Night Court, and um, the guy, oh, the, oh, the the doctor from MASH, uh, David Ogden Stiers. You already met oh, him? How'd you meet him? He's an N-scale modeler. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah, and he showed up, he showed up at Microtrains, oh, years ago, came through for a tour. Did you tell him about the podcast? I did, before it was even a podcast. There you go. Before there were podcasts, I said, in the future... There's going to be this cool podcast with all the hot kids in town. I've been trying to get Michael Gross on, but he kind of keeps blowing me off, so I'm starting to lose interest. Really? Yeah. I message, I message him every now and then. I can ask him. Why don't like. you try too? I think if enough people message him, maybe he'll get the he'll get the drift. Mm. Yeah, I think so. Hang yeah. A second. Yeah. If, I think he will. Let me write that down so I yeah. remember it's either, it. It's either that or he listen to the podcast already. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Said, I think I'm going to go there. Yeah, listen to the part you've been on. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. um, I was listening. <laughs> so, did you have a question for Joe Bruce? I don't know. I forgot. No, Come on, Bruce said Kelly, or not your Kelly. Yeah. yeah so I was wondering. I wonder why he changes Argo? his name for uh, uh, on on his image there. Ship, ship, shipmate, or ship bounder, or whatever it is, has got there now. What ship shore? Ship shore. That's it. Should I change it? No, 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 no. I'm just curious. She wants to know it. why. Well, you know what, Joe? My, Joe, uh, before you came, address. Oh, okay, all it. right, Joe. Uh, it, before it, you can capture that, I, I'm not sophisticated enough in the ways of whereby to manipulate it so, so that it better represents my personality. Is that is that the uh, company you used to have making the ship models? Yeah, well, it wasn't a company. It was just always in my email address. Mm. I was, um, I, I wanted something different, um, shipwright, but uh, that was already taken. So my wife said, "Ship sure, because you're sure about ships." <laughs> I know. <laughs> sure, sure, ship. Eh? It wasn't. It wasn't taken. <laughs> Joe, I always it's feel like in my email address forever. Joe, I always feel like hmm? you're holding out on us. Or that you're suspicious, my best. or you're suspicious of the entire process of this podcast. Are you suspicious? I, I, I worry about you know, where it goes. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> now that that makes sense. So, what is what is ship? What is it? Ship shore? Ship sure? What it? What is ship, it? Ship sure. So why why is that? What is it? so you are you more of a ship modeler than you am? Are you are a model railroader? No, one of the things I did back in Florida. I had a side business making um, uh, resin ship models, uh, one 700 scale and one 350 scale. It was called Jag Collective. And before that, it was Jim Shirley Designs. Um, named after my partner. <laughs> That's what I've been thinking of. So I don't know. I, I've been thinking of calling the podcast the Gene Sherrison Show. 
Wh- why would you call your yeah. sh- business Jim Shirley? You just picked a name out of the hat? No, that was his name. Oh, you had a he partner. Was driven by Yeah, it was yeah, he was the money behind the the business, so he the the stipulation was it was going to be named after him. So that lasted for a couple of years. We did really well, but you know, those things kind of fell apart as they normally do. And um I went off on my own and started uh, with uh, two other friends of mine, started uh, another company. We were Joe Allen and Gene, so it was JAG, JAG Collective. Uh, well, and if we you went off to, if you went off on your own, Allen and Gene wouldn't have been involved. Well, I went off on my own, then I met up with them. Oh, I Let see. Let me clarify that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I picked them up along the way. <clears throat> but yeah, I, I left the I left the my employment with the the other guy and started my own business doing um architecture models and design work for Disney and Universal. And, and on a side, you know, uh, we'd been developing uh, ship models and tank models and 1 16th scale. And that's kind of about the time I started getting really interested and more interested in, in uh, trains than I had before. I'm not sure why, but um, yeah, I got involved with the N scale club there in Orlando. And uh, that's all she wrote. Do you think, uh, do you think that, what do you think is the biggest of all the hobbies? Like I was talking to somebody, who was I talking to? Oh, it was when I was, one of the times I was on, yeah, it was one of the times I was on the dude show and he insisted that RC cars was a bigger hobby than model railroading. And I don't think that's the case at all myself, personally. RC cars kind of come and go because it's not some, you can do it by yourself, but it gets pretty boring pretty quick if you're just doing it by yourself. Yeah, there's clubs and stuff. I th- I think most hobby shops have a large presence with that stuff. Uh, it's definitely, you know, uh, income generator. Um, I, I, it's hard to tell. You know, the last time I was in Chicago for the 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 toy show there, toy and hobby show they had, uh, RC had its own, you know, area there. I think plastic model kits uh, as a general, uh, you know, uh, Planes, armors, figure that kind of stuff might be, might be as numbers wise, people involved in it might be bigger, especially if you look at some of the hobby magazines that come from overseas, just the amount of stuff that comes out versus what you see, you know, here with the trains, if, you know, it's come back and then a few people that are doing their own publishing like Lance. Meinheim. No, I, don't, I see. Now, I, in, uh, I would disagree with you on that because I don't ever remember. And of Bruce, you would. let me finish. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't ever remember uh, all the years I was buying Model Railroader and RMC and trains and Rail Fan and Railroad. I don't ever remember there being a, a, a large sampling of plastic modeling magazines. There was Fine Scale Modeler from Kambach mm-hmm. and there was car modeler from Kambach and those are the only two magazines I ever remember and they were perennially of all the hobby magazines in that in that genre model railroader was by far the biggest and the most robust ever yeah and fine scale mm-hmm. modeler oh, yeah. came out in the late 70s early 80s somewhere in there but it was never as it was never as robust mm-hmm. as model railroader no, no, but there's a lot, but I, also, a lot I always of picked it up to read because it also had something in there you could use well, yeah but yeah. my point is Oh, yeah. Model Railroader was a very robust magazine. RMC in its heyday was very robust, and it's robust now. And then there was Rail Fan and Railroad and Trains. And, I mean, you would go to the, your your local bookstore. And there was always more Model Railroading magazines than there was. There, RC Cars had a big, big magazines, but uh, Plastic Modeling, now the only two I ever remember or fine scale modeler and, and car modeler. And of course, car modelers long since left us. And I think is a fine scale modeler yeah, there, even going was, anymore. Oh yeah. They're still around. Yeah. There was also yeah. all the, um, um, it was scale models, scale ship modeler. Uh, the British had Airfix magazine and they had uh, a model aircraft modeler. Um, they had three or four magazines that came out there. Japan had a bunch of slick high gloss monthly magazines like Coco Fan and a few others. Um, I think back then, yeah, I would say for the American market, yeah. But I think uh, worldwide, uh, there's a, there was a lot of stuff. And today now, um, it's different. I mean, look what we have for model railroading magazines now. we got, you know, a, a resuscitated model railroad craftsman, which is great. I love seeing that model railroader, you know, less so. Uh, the other, all the other magazines are gone, but there's so much coming from overseas, Um 
uh, in the Eastern Bloc and France and England, yep. Japan, Korea, uh, Australia. There's these really nice, big, thick, glossy magazines that come out every single month that are huge and uh, they cover the spectrum. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, I don't know what the actual sales number is for for products. I think model railroading is 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 wide and diverse. Uh, but it tends to be a high ticket item too, kind of like with model with the RC cars, right? You got three, four hundred bucks to get something moving. And, yeah, but um, you can. Yeah, I can see it. But you know, when you walk into, I mean, I can think you can walk in a hobby shop back when I was a kid. You know, there's a a reasonable section of model railroad stuff, and then there's just tons of plastic models. So you know, yeah. there may not have been a magazine for them, but there are people doing it. And yeah. even today, you know, you it. Uh, you know, uh, depending what you're getting, you know, you, you can be dropping between 50 and 100 bucks easy on a, a basic kit. And then you look at some of these guys will drop oh, yeah. another couple hundred on photo etch parts and things like that. And then, well, sure. then, you, yeah. then you've got all the, you know, the stuff ammo by MIG and, uh, uh, you know, his magazines on various, mm -hmm. uh, his weathering magazine and things like that. Yeah. So it, it's one of these uh, fields that uh, uh, I guess has matured and people are now taking advantage of the fact that there seems to be easier to get information out there to people. And, yeah. you know, if, if you look around there, there's tons of information. Oh yeah. I remember when I was a kid, you know, there was a, I got a hold of this uh, world war II soft back book and it was this grainy picture of a, of a German armored car. And that was, boy, that was great. You know, I finally had some information to build that old Aurora kit. And now there are maybe a dozen I've talked about this before, maybe a dozen publications on that, on that four wheel German armored car, you know, with pictures of them. And I think just more information and, and maybe what I'm thinking more of is, is, is information and what's out there and available now to everybody. Um, uh, I just, I just, you know, I, I get magazines from overseas for model railroading as well. And there's a couple that come out of um, uh, China that are really, really, I mean, out of Japan, excuse me, that are very good, but they tend to be less on modeling and more on a prototype. But every month there's this, you know, 200 page, all glossy, all, all color magazine that comes out. Chew it or something like that. It's called. Uh, and, um, and now, you know, with, in Europe, you've got, um, you know, you've got Hornby, you've got three or four magazines in, in, in Eng England that come out in a, British Isles area that come out. Yeah, there's there's a railway modeler, British railway modeler. There's uh, you know the Hornby magazine. There's at least four I can think of yeah. uh, coming out of the UK, and you know then France, they've got Continent, Germany. Continental modeler in France, right. and yeah, yeah. And so, so just, and just and, yeah, it just popped in my head too. I can think back in the uh, the seventies and eighties, Monogram. They always uh, a lot of their military modelers would have a. Uh, like a four page, uh, uh, insert in there on uh, building a diorama by Shepard Payne. Yeah. And, and those, you can still, you look around, you can still find them online, but I remember picking up a couple of monogram kits and there's the Shepard Payne, how to, you know, take, take this thing, which I would just slap together and, uh, do something with it. Done a terrible job on it, but here's how you can actually make it look like a realistic scene, which, yeah. you know, that's you know, very popular back with monogram models. It's like with squadron publications when I was in junior high, they started coming out with their, um, their uh, bi-monthly or quarterly magazine. It had modeling tips and stuff in it, you know? And, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's hard to tell. I, I think model railroading, you know, it's worldwide. There's a lot of uh, sub genres out there. I mean, Russia, they're really big on TT scale. There's a ton of stuff that's made in a, Eastern Bloc and Japan, you know, Kato. Um, I mean, I'm not sure if it's true or not, but I've heard rumors that, you know, we're a very small part of their market here in the United States, that a lot of their focus is, is just feeding the Japanese uh, market, um, which is sizable. Um, you know, uh, it's a different type of modeling, but it's definitely sizable. So I don't know. I don't know. You know, if I go into a hobby shop, like I got a local hobby shop here, if I go in it, um, it's about, it's divided into threes. There's bicycles, there's RC, and then there's and plastic kits, including trains. They don't carry much trains anymore. Bicycles. Of, yeah. That's their big yeah. business. Cycle club. A cycle club. In, a, ho in a hobby shop? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bicycles? Owls, cycle and hobby. Yeah. Yep. Well, that's just, that's, pretty, that's, that's unique to you because on the East Coast, there's bicycle shops and they got nothing to do with hobbies. Yeah, we have that too here. This just happens to be this guy's 
secondary business. He's folded them together. Oh, wow. The, the one hobby shop I used to go to in Windsor sometimes uh, originally was uh, Janice's Cycle and Hobby. Well, that's long since gone away. I think most cycle shops now are exclusive yeah. bicycle shops. Yeah, we have the, we have a bunch of those here. If you've got the market to support it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I still feel like Joe's holding out on us. There's something. There's something. Uh, he's there's something he's not telling us. Maybe we can find out if we ask him the Kelly questions. Yeah, there mm. you go. Oh um, Bruce, can you move your microphone for, away from your nose, like uh, one quarter of an one? Uh, two thirty seconds of an inch. Which one? No, there's Kelly and there's Kelly Bruce. and Bruce. Come on, we gotta figure this out, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was. I wasn't sure. Well, well, there's Kelly and there's Bruce. There's Kelly. Well, it should be it should be Bruce. Then there's Kelly. Mm-hmm. Well, whatever. I I always <laughs> refer to Kelly as Kelly and Bruce as Bruce. Mm. Kelly's I Kelly. Does. Hey you. Uh, yeah. Hey, do you sell much stuff to Europe? Uh, uh, by the way, the people we have here tonight are uh, Bruce, uh, the mailboy. Yes. Uh, we have Kelly, uh, the modeler simply known as yeah. Kelly. So everybody knows who that is. He's the president. Also super fan number one. Yeah. Yep. Um, yeah, super fan number one. And he's uh, he's the former president of the uh, Med- the Rogue Valley HO Scale Model <laughs> Railroad Club. Now he's the director at large. How big do you have to be to be a director at large? Uh, at least he's 235. It. 235. <laughs> yeah, 6'1", 235. Um, and, uh, director at Extra Large? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that, that, yeah. yeah. He likes some skin tight. <laughs> they, like they like their director skin tight. Anything. <laughs> Just call it number. Uh, um, uh, and uh, he's the chairman of the board. Board of directors. Can you do New York, New York? Start spreading the news. I'm leaving today. I want to be a part of it in New York. He does a good bangles, so. Does he? Walk like an Egyptian. Yeah. There you go. Oh, I caught him this morning doing it at six o'clock. <laughs> through, through, through the resin part of the plant there? Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, it must be the fumes going to him, is it? I, yeah, definitely. I think, I think soon we're going to start calling him Sleepy Smoking Joe D'Amato. He sounds sleepy <laughs> to me tonight. Yeah, it's been a long day Why? for him. Yeah, it has been a long day. Well, it's been a long couple of months. It's been a long year. Uh, yeah, it's only it's only been a long year for you. The rest of us have had, the rest of us have been like we're on vacation. I know, apparently. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Lucky. Yeah. Uh, How many months has your business been closed? How many months Uh, up from the, in the first year, how many months was your business closed? It was never closed other than when the fire happened. Right. So mine's been closed for six months. So stick, quit your whining. (laughs) (laughs) just because we know how to run our business doesn't mean oh no no (laughs) wow (laughs) Uh, this points off right now yeah start the kelly oh stand up for yourself this points off i'm dead (laughs) um and and we got sleepy smoking joe d'amato who's uh so tonight we're gonna ask uh sleepy smoking joe the uh (laughs) that that, that, he sounds like like he's sleepy Sounds like something from Disney. I know it does. <laughs> Sleepy Smoking Joe, it's the new ride. It's yeah. the Smoky voice. No, he's just a new character. Uh, Sleepy yeah. Smoking Joe. I mean, he sounds sleepy. He's the eighth, he's the eighth dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> Sleazy. Um, yeah. All right, so we're going to do the Kelly questions. Uh, do you have enough? Uh, do you have a pencil and paper there, Kelly? I'm all set. How about you, uh, Bruce? I've got a uh, brand new uh, ream of paper and a couple line pads and uh, a couple books, so I should be good. Got enough pencils. Got some oh, yeah. Salt. Yeah. All right. Got a whole a whole new box of number, uh, the, the number two Ticonderogas. Uh, number awesome. two Ticonderogas. Uh, okay, this is it then. Uh, are you ready, Joe? Sleepy, I'm, sleepy I'm smoking all Joe? for it. All I'm right. All for it. <laughs> oh, uh, you better give him the hat first. Yeah, yeah, yeah you got to wear this uh, tinfoil hat, which you get. But to we keep. will autograph for it. Yeah, you yeah. Can take it home. It's a lovely party. Yeah, and, and just ignore the fact that it's wired into the wall plug. Yeah, that's good. I need to warm up some pizza anyway. Uh, uh, 
You have been desperate to be on the uh, Kelly question, so try to pretend you like being here, will you? I love it. I'm just excited. <laughs> can't you tell? No, I can't tell. <laughs> it's uh, Sleepy Smoking Joe. Uh, which Which do you prefer, steam or diesel? Uh, diesel. Any particular diesel? Um, well, the stuff I model, probably small switchers. Uh, any, like an SW1 or something? Um, yeah, uh, SW 1500. Um, I like the, uh, 44 tonners, um, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Unusual things. Alcos, anything Alcos is fine by me. With the S4 and things like that. I know. So. <laughs> We're going to have to pay people to listen to this. Thank you. <laughs> <sighs> uh, what's your favorite prototype railroad? Prototype B Pacific Electric. Okay, and where's of, uh, where was it? Where was it? It used to, it used to be down in Los Angeles. It was um, inner urban, uh, made basically uh, you know trolleys and inner urban cars under wire, and they had also had uh, freight service uh, through the city. And early on, it was uh, you know steam engines, and when it, when they dieselized uh, with Baldwin's and and um, and GE units and stuff like that, they um, they got absorbed by Southern Pacific fairly early on and, um, but still retain the, uh, Pacific electric, uh, logos and things. And what was really interesting about them was, um, you know, when the trolleys or inner urbans would roll through downtown, the trolley poles would, you know, kick the, um, kick the lights, crossing lights and things like that. Street lights. They would hit and them. When they went diesel. They, huh? You say they'd hit them. No, they, they in their trolley. The trolley wires would, uh, you know, trip the oh. the uh, turn signals and, and lights and things like that to go through intersections. And then when it was steam, um, you know, they would, uh, uh, you know, they had other cars that would uh, take care of it, but they put a, a, a diesel on the front with a, a trolley pole and uh, kind of escort the steam through town, that kind of stuff towards the end of their their time. But just interesting because they, they roamed around all parts of LA and I've always liked LA other than all the, you know, the crowds and stuff. It's kind of an interesting place to be. So you like, you like LA except for the people, the, the, the number of people, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the sheer volume, the weight of them. So how did you become interested in the Pacific electric? Uh, right. um, I, I'll, be, I'll tell you exactly. I saw, um, there's the, um, uh, a, a number of uh, freight engines uh, that they have, or not engines, but they're, they're, um, they're freight units that are basically inner urbans that had round windows on the front and back. And they were, they looked like, a, um, uh, like a regular freight car, like a, I mean, like a baggage car. They had two doors on each side and they had a, uh, looked like a harem and roof and then a, a, a cantonary set up on the top. And, and it was pulling outside brace box cars to, some alleyway in, in LA. And I thought, man, that is cool. And so that kind of got me interested in it. And I started doing some research as I want to do more often than not and started discovering how really interesting this railroad was and all the different things it did. And um, there was, a, there was some good information on it, but you know, not a whole lot. And, and I've always liked Southern Pacific. I mean, before that it was SP just because, you know, living in California when they were still active before, you know, the, the whole Rio Grande, debacle and and uh then then giving up to up we'd see that all the time and it just you know i just modeled what i saw so, so there's this so find yeah. out that one of the they, they absorbed was pacific electric that really got me interested because i like inner urban you know like street running basically with my with my engines and stuff so is that your so, final answer pacific electric i'm sorry yes it is yes it is <laughs> um 400 bucks what are, and what was it nicknamed uh, red car line, I believe. Uh, red cars, the red cars. Yeah. It was a private, the... was a privately owned mass transit system in Southern California, consisting of electrically powered streetcars, inner urban cars and buses, and was the largest electric railway system in the world in the 1920s. Wow. You know a lot about it more than I do. Oh yeah. I've been studying it for years. I know. I mean, it just rolls off your tongue. Yeah. And yeah. And, so it's a... and who, who yeah. owned it? Um, you know, I don't remember. When was it founded? Uh, early 1900s. 1901. Uh, when did it finally cease operations? In the 20s, 1920 something. Uh, 1965. 
65? Yeah. Uh, okay. I, I go by the data was absorbed by SP. So. Okay. So I, I thought, it only. Anyway, yeah. So it's owned by Pacific Gas and Electric, wasn't it? And do you know which uh, uh, Supreme's hit was popular in 1965? Um, where did my love go? Back in my arms again. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> I'm failing miserably. Uh, if you were rail fanning, would you rather... Well, you sound like you're sleepy. You're sleepy smoking Joe. I've had a long day. Well, so have I. I, 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 I. It's hard keeping that scale going, okay? Maybe he ate some queso. Yeah, maybe I... Yeah. Oh. There we go. Yeah. What did you have for supper? Uh, some gummies. So there you go. You're on a sugar <laughs> high, and you're coming down off a sugar <laughs> high. Yeah. Maybe, they may be sure. special gummies. Though. Special gummies. Yeah, yeah maybe. Not, yeah. Uh, if you're rail fanning, would you rather photograph the trains or ride on them? Uh, photograph. Okay. And it, is that something you do now? Can how, Can you teach Kelly yeah. how to take a photograph? <laughs> uh, no, man. I mean, well, he is, him to come in on time. He is the worst. He is the worst is photographer I've ever met. Like he can't, he can't even take a picture with his phone, and he can't get the job done. Uh, did you ever? He's too busy. Sign, he's too busy signing autographs. <laughs> did you ever get those pictures loaded up uh, uh, from the, your trip on the uh, destroyer? Yeah, I think I put some up on. Well, some, uh, but you had a whole bunches, and you were going to load them yeah. up too. Did you ever? All right. No, I haven't. Of probably, course, yeah. And how long ago was that? Oh, geez, three, two years ago, three, three years ago. Exactly. What's going on with you guys? Is there something like, in the water there in Medford? Are you guys, are they, you two yeah. guys just hippies, old hippies? <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> man. <laughs> Burnouts. Yeah, really. What do you, do you have a camera that you like to uh, photograph the trains with, or do you just use your phone or what? Um, well, nowadays, it's the, the phone is so much better than the $2,000 for the Nikons I own, <laughs> so... Um, you don't still have yeah. your film Nikons, do you? Uh, no, but I do have a Calumet uh, 4x5 Bellows camera. Okay. Uh, with a Polaroid back. So I've done some stuff with that. I mean, I, I've been in photography forever and learned um, you know, the zone system and black and white large format photography after college. For Did that for a couple of years. So I've always been intrigued by the you know F64 and, and large format black and white. So is your Nikon yeah. stuff, is it digital or is it film? It's digital. It's okay. Digital. Yeah. All it's right. all digital, but it doesn't have, I mean, the the iPhone, I got an iPhone 11 and it's oh. it's superior in just about every way. Plus, you know, it's it's handy to be able to do, you know, the manipulate, manipulating the, the pictures and, you know, on the fly without having to come back and yeah. sit down in front of it and do it. Um, no, iPhone, I can send it off. iPhone 11, you must be getting paid pretty well there. Yeah, I am. Is it the pro or is it is it the big one or the smaller one? Which one do you the have? smaller one? Yeah, me too. The big one's too big to put in your pocket, I think. Right. And you know, it's I'm not sure I I I really need all the features that the that, that camera has with the three lenses and Oh, oh I have the three so, lenses. I have the three lenses, uh, but I mean I meant the size because they have the bigger oh, one. Oh, size, yeah. No. No, it's too big. Yeah. Uh what was your first model train? Um, I got it when I was in junior high in Florida. It was an Aurora set, you know, the, the, uh, I, don't I forget the name of them now, but they were, they were packaged by Aurora and, uh, uh they were on a little turn type turn style at the local hobby shop. And, uh, it was a, I believe it was a GP 35 and a bunch of box cars and stuff. I'd gotten some money for, for my grandfather for Christmas and uh was going to go down and buy a gillows uh flying airplane kit um and i saw those on the rack the postage stamp series there we go um but i saw those and wow i could get an engine and some cars and some track and stuff for the money i had so yeah and i immediately went home and uh this, cordoned off the back of the garage and started working on the layout this is when you were in high school junior high junior high and where did you yeah. where, where where did you go to junior high where were you born well, I was born in Missouri, but my dad was in the Air Force. 
So we were all over. This happened to be, we just come moved from California. We were stationed out there for a year and okay. we moved back to uh, Patrick Air Force Base, which is near Cocoa Beach, Florida. And um, that's big. Yeah. I ride, yeah. I ride, I ride past there on my motorcycle often. It's right, right, right beside Highway One, or One yeah, A, I uh, guess. I guess it's One A. A One A, A One A. Yeah, yeah, that's where I grew up. So I was there through uh, 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 one year of junior high and then three years of high school, and I graduated from there. Okay. Uh, now, if, if I recall, those postage stamp trains, they came in like a box that folded open, right? Right. Yeah. 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 There was the sets they had, but they also had. The ones hang in with a like a little blister pack kind of thing. Yeah, okay. I because I, I remember seeing as an hour, it'd be like a, a a set there, and you kind of fold open the cover, and there's the uh, yeah, you know, yeah. The, everything you need to rent scaled in a box. Yeah, the art was cool, and it just like wow, you know, I can, you know, instead of you know destroying another balsa wood airplane, I could you know maybe do something a little more permanent. I had been building models forever, even as a kid, uh, plastic model kits. So I thought, well, this is neat. You know, it's about the right size. It goes with my smaller airplanes that I had, and maybe I can do an airport. And you know, and what scale were they? N scale. Oh, okay. So what year yeah. would that have been? Sixty-eight. So they had N scale in sixty-eight. Oh yeah. Oh, it goes all the way back to the fifties in England. Uh, yep. It was a two millimeter ga- two millimeter scale with two millimeter guild. You used to call it triple O. Yeah, it was a. Uh, we had, I have a bunch of those magazines still, and they uh, most of them are showing you how to make your own motors, you know, how to how to wind them, and yeah, it's pretty amazing. That's uh, back in the good old days of if you needed it, you had to make it. So, and it didn't run very well though. That end scale did it. Um, well, I think the Japanese had some really nice stuff, some brass that they were bringing in. Um, I, I don't know, you know, like I said it's before right. my time. But, no, but I mean the but stuff you the, craftsman stuff. the post the postage stamp stuff that you bought did it run very well? Uh, yeah, it did. I think it was all. I think it was Yugoslavian built. Okay, I think it was like River Rossi stuff. Or uh, I still have some of them at work actually in the in the library. I've got some few examples of them. But uh, from what I remember, I mean, you know, back then, what do you know? I mean, I, I watched YouTube videos where guys have done their first layout and they've got this, you know. They've got their engine and 16 cars going as fast as possible, you know, slingshotting around a layout. And that was kind of me. <laughs> um, true or false, end scale is dead. False. Yeah? Do you ever notice oh, it? Yeah. I always feel like end scale is like a bad Wi-Fi signal. So, like, wh- like well, it's, wh- it's not big. That's why, you know. Well, like, when it runs, it's great. But when it's not running, it's not. It's kind of annoying. Well, same with HO. I mean, okay. any scale. I think, you know, it's just, it's, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, I have to defend my skill all the time. Um, uh, naysayers and ne'er-do-wells. Um, it's, it's not as big, obviously, as other scales. I mean, there's. It runs major- great now. It runs great. The whole end yeah. scale is like a bad Wi-Fi signal. It's just me being yeah. silly. That's- the older stuff, well, it'll, you know, some of the old stuff would definitely mess up your Wi-Fi signal when it was running. Yeah, when yeah, the old stuff didn't run. Somebody has to move their microphone away from their nose a little bit because I'm constantly hearing this. <laughs> and it's driving me nuts. It's not me. It could be. No. <laughs> My nose is plugged. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, there you go. Whoever it is, just put a piece of duct tape over your nose. And be and be a mouth breather for the for the rest of the the show, Bruce. Oh, right, right. Bruce, you didn't go on mute. I hope. No. All right, oh boy. Um, I can though. No, don't. <laughs> Who is uh, this? Is a good question for Joe. Uh, what's your fa- what is your favorite model railroad? Um, good question. I, I, uh, I think, uh, hang, I think the, uh, hang on a minute. Southwestern. Hang, hang on. Has some of the questions <laughs> up till this point not been so good. No, they've been amazing. Okay. I just haven't, I just haven't responded very well. Okay. I'm willing to take that shot. Uh, so anyways, your favorite model railroad is Drummond Southwestern. The who, what? The John Olson. The Drummond Southwestern. Jerome and Southwestern. Uh, Jerome and Southwestern. Whatever happened yeah. to John Olson? He'd be interested. He's still working for Disney. We, uh, we uh, got close. We we both worked at the same time, and I would show up somewhere where he was supposed to be, and he was he'd be. I'd go to Orlando, and he'd be in Paris. I go to Paris, and he'd be in Japan. Um, never got to meet him. I got close in Sacramento at the uh, NMRA convention, but um, he was uh, uh, busy doing some other stuff. We didn't get together. We've we've emailed 
you know, back and forth quite a bit back then. Um, so I've got an invite at some point to come down to his, his uh, cabin down in Bishop that he's got, but he still, he still consults for Disney. He still does stuff for Imagineering. He's retired supposedly, but you wouldn't know it by the, as much time as he spends overseas. You know? But I've always liked his, the Jerome and Southwestern was just a really neat, uh, you know, it's, it wasn't even my, I've never really been a big steam narrow gauge kind of guy, but I, I just love the, the way um, it was built and the way it looked and the way the track was. And yeah. And I, I just liked to, I, I've got most of his articles. He goes way back to the early seventies um, doing stuff for um, prototype modeler and stuff like that. Do you know He's how a to creative get a guy? Do you know how to get a hold of John Olson? Yeah. Mm-hmm. You do? Uh-huh. Okay, well, help me out with that, and we'll get a hold of him in an interview. And you could be, you could uh, be one of the co-hosts. Awesome. You could be sleep. Sure. You could be sleepy, smoking Joe with a co-host. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> that's a big. That's a big handle to carry around. It is a big handle, but I think it's going to stick. Any any time I usually any time one that can, just comes out of left field, they usually stick. Mm. Um. So, go ahead, Kelly. Yeah, I've, I've got his. I've got his email address somewhere, so I'll uh, cool. Try to. Try to reestablish some kind. Yeah, it would be nice if we yeah, get a hold of him because Michael Gross keeps blowing me off. Yeah, well, I've got to talk to him too. All right, yeah, you um, talk to him. See if he's, he... he's called us a couple of times, and we've met him at shows and things like that. And you know, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I I'm a friend of his on Facebook, along with a thousand other people. But yeah, um, we've kind of talked back and forth, like we kind of remember each other. Okay. Um, uh, so. Uh, yeah. Uh, who's the, who is the who is or was the most influential model railroader for you? Uh, Bob Smouse, Robert Smouse. Um, I, how do I, I? I recognize that name, don't I? Yeah. He. Uh, well, yeah. He. He used to be um, uh, one of the uh, hosts on Victory Garden uh, back in the eighties, and um, he built a lot of LA layouts. Uh, he's got one that uh, was featured uh, a while back and he's done, I mean, he's got a lot of stuff he's done and he's retired. He was working in LA, uh, worked for the, uh, one of the newspapers down there, but he also had this side gig on with victory garden with PBS and uh, used to watch his shows every, every week. And um, uh, he had a, a bunch of layouts. I used to see back in the eighties that I really liked one in particular of LA the downtown area and, and it's just his photography was great and he really set you know he set the atmosphere it wasn't you know um you know some of the modeling you see today but it was uh it had a lot yeah. of character and it really just that'd set be the uh, port of los angeles in the yeah the 80, was, uh, 1990 1991 yeah. the right around that time yeah right we talk on on facebook all the time and message each other he's retired yeah, now. december 90 and then january and february 91 right um march as well yeah, yeah he did a uh, that was at the uh, uh the uh, a layout that was on like a wheelbarrow kind of a setup that's where i got the idea to do that with my stuff where i've got a, a set of wheels on one end of it and i can actually roll it around the house or out, out the front door if i need to without taking it apart but he's uh, retired now and he lives up in uh, on one of the islands off of seattle and he's got part of his layout and he's got it set up in his garage he's expanded a little bit and he's if you go on Facebook to the LA Modelers, Los Angeles, uh, or Southern Pacific Modelers, Prototype Modelers site, right? He, he posts there quite often. Um, has a lot of pictures of, just recently he's been posting a lot of pictures of a lot of his older work and stuff. But a really nice guy, really nice guy. I mean, just very giving of uh, his time and information. And um, yeah, but I always, res- I loved, loved his work. I mean, there, there are a lot of people out there that are just extraordinary modelers, you know. And um, and weathering and things like that. Just, but you know, just some guys, their work just sort of resonates with you, and and you can kind of, you really get pulled into it. You know, there's that story attached to it that I've talked about before. Yeah. And 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 he's really good. He's a good storyteller. You know, in a good way. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And uh, yeah, he's like I said, he's just it's it's been a real pleasure to get to know him, even from a distance that uh you know reaffirms all the things i thought about him before cool. that's good so, uh, yeah. well, maybe we should get him on the layer or on the podcast I bet he would do it I bet he would do it. that'd be even our number three yeah bob smells bob smells yeah I'll, I'll be your booking agent for a while yeah and you could be smoking you could be the co-host to be uh, bob smoking joe yeah sleepy smoking joe i love it that's a t-shirt that's mj 
Uh, yeah, SSMJ yeah. or yeah. J, or J <laughs> JA or something. All right, something like that. Um, sleepy smoking Joe. That's only SSJ. Um, but anyway, he's a, he's a great guy. So okay, I, and I think a lot of people are really excited that he's you know been sharing lately on the on the forums and stuff. So. Yeah. Um. So select one of the following as your favorite: bench work, track work, scenery, or electrical. Landscaping. I guess that'd be scenery. All right. Um, yeah, scenery. Uh, well, bench work, track work, scenery, or electrical, and you said landscaping. So it just kind of threw us because I think the was question. The I, was that the joke we had last week? I don't remember. Months ago. Yeah. <laughs> on, the, on the Christmas show. Um, what joke are you talking about? Yeah. The Christmas show. <laughs> Jeez. That that was scenery, but yeah, was it, you're, you're close. Landscape. Yeah, yeah. Are you okay. talking about Ken Zes- Zeska? Yeah, it sounds like yeah. Fresca. Fresca. I yeah. hope you're proud of yourself, Ken, for what you did. Um, right. Ken's always listening. All right, how about this one? If you were going to use cereal to simulate an open load in a scale seventy ton hopper, what kind of cereal would it be? Um, probably Rice Krispies for sugar beets. Sugar beets? I've never even heard of them. Sugar beet loads? Oh, yeah. That's so the Pacific did a whole pile of sugar beet stuff. Even yeah, in that's... Ontario, there used to be a big sugar beet industry. Yeah, yeah. but is it a uh, cereal? Colorado was a ton of it. Is it a cereal? No, right, right, Rice Krispies to do sugar beets. We'd, oh, we'd my God. like it. So what is it? Right. What is the cereal, then? I'll, I, I, I... Rice Krispies. Oh, my God. Sugar beets. Is there a that Canadian that version of that? Yes, yeah, they're called Rice Krispies. There you go. <laughs> well, how did we get sugar beets out of Rice Krispies? Because he uses like them it. to model sugar beets. What was the question? The question was, if you're going to use cereal to simulate an open load in a scale 70-ton hopper, what kind of cereal would it be? Are sugar beets a cereal? No, Rice Krispies are, but they would simulate sugar beets. Sugar beets. Oh, sugar beets are, are tan-colored, are they? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. They're like giant potatoes. Oh, okay, if you say so. Um, if you would, uh, if you could, uh, we're going to give somebody starting out in the hobby, just one item and cost was, uh, no object. What would it be? A subscription probably to, um, model railroad hobbyist. Okay. Um, that's because of the information. I mean, you can give somebody tools, but if they don't know how to use them, I thought, right. isn't um, model railroad hobbyist free? They have a subscription too. They have the running extra, yeah. which you pay. Yeah. Less than a couple bucks a month for. I know, right. I know, but don't they have a free one? Yes, they, yes, do. they do. Yeah, so you're gonna when yeah. cost is no object, you're gonna give them something free. Try to play along, no, guys. I'm gonna pay. Okay, yes, yes, I would. I'm not cheap. <laughs> <laughs> um, move your microphone a little closer to your mouth, Joe. There we go. Is that better? Yeah, it is. Okay. Uh, have you have you ever uh, tried to uh, interview Kelly? With a portable, with port, with portable equipment, where he has to hold his own microphone, literally. With, no, I've, I've no, I've been spared that. Uh, literally that within fifteen seconds, he's holding it down by his waist. <laughs> well, because he wants you to look down there. Probably. And and he's, and he's talking. Uh, That's one. Yep. That's actually two. Um, two. Uh, and he's talking while he's holding it down there. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. I haven't seen that. No. Um. Where do you buy most of your model railroad supplies? Um, I always, uh, the brick and mortar, local, uh, Al's Toy and Hobby. What is it called? Uh, Al's, uh, I'm sorry, Al's uh, Bicycle and Hobby Shop. So how much model railroad stuff do they have in Al's Bicycle and Hobby Shop? They, well, I get my track there, everything, but if I want something, I order it through them. Um, there's, I mean, I, I do buy some some things online when I see a, a good sale, but um, you know, they do me right. They always get what I need. Uh, I get a, a, a nice little discount on the stuff. Plus I'm supporting a local brick and mortar, uh, unlike the rest of the members of my club. Um, no, I think we've hit a I think it's, a, I think it's important to support the local hobby shop. I believe in brick and mortar and you know, I like the, I like seeing people that are in the hobby. I like making sure that they can feed their family and, and they stay open and they, they don't carry a lot. I mean, they carry some things. Um, you know, it's great for supplies. I get all my 
paint and glue and tools and weathering equipment and stuff there. So then are you yeah. are you hoping that uh, online shops go to business? Is that where we're going with this? No. Uh, I just prefer to keep a local business going. Okay. I mean, they're, uh, they're they on, online obviously is an important uh, yeah. important business model, yeah, obviously, be, be, and, I, and I support them. But I just, you know, they have got nationwide, worldwide reach, and my local hobby shop doesn't. Right. So I want to keep them in business. You want to keep them in business. What about you? Have you ever been there, Kelly? Yeah, I've been there, and I bought some stuff there. What's it like inside? Yeah. Uh, majority of stuff is bicycles, RC, and models. It's a very small section of uh, model railroader now. You know, yeah, it's, they used to have a lot more of it. Then yeah, I, mean, I get what I need from them. So yeah, okay. And if I need something, you know, I, I'll I'll email them and or message them. I'll see. Uh, you know, they can get anybody, any any uh, any product I need, any manufacturer they can, they can get. And I don't mind waiting a couple of days for it or a week. It's okay. I'm not, I'm not in any hurry. And. And the nice thing about it too is, a lot of times when they'll order stuff for me, they'll get a couple of extras and put them on the shelf. So in a way, that's you know sometimes it might encourage people to you know they see that and they go, oh, I can get that, and you know maybe something else. And they they carry a lot of our stuff as well. And they're at one twenty seven North Central Avenue in Medford, Oregon. Mm. Yeah. And their phone number is five four one seven seven two five eight eight zero. Yeah. So call tomorrow. Call Al's bike and hobby shop. Ask for, ask for Jamie. Ask for Jamie. Yeah. Nice people. Really, Brent, the owner. Nice guy. He used to have a shop in Klamath Falls. Which so is, do you, does uh, Microtrain sell online? Yes, we do. So do you tell those people to go to uh, support their local brick and uh, hobby shop or what? Yeah. Well, we, um, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> well, we encourage them to, uh, to, buy locally obviously and or whatever they want to do i mean what we sell online is um uh usually stuff we don't sell anything that's brand new uh other than couplers and that kind of stuff you know the the supplies but if you want the latest car that just came out um you'll probably have to wait for that because we want to encourage people to go to their dealer for that really so you don't sell well when you say dealer do you mean online dealer store dealer yeah. what it yeah a dealer yeah I, I I believe that's the way we have it set up is that the first of the month stuff, the, that, that stuff that's available that month is generally not available through us at that point. I could be wrong, but that's the last time I, okay. I don't really get involved in that part of the building that much, but okay. I think, I know we do, do encourage people to buy from their, their dealers. That's well, why we have a dealer network. Absolutely. And we certainly encourage, uh, uh, brick and mortar shops. I mean, uh, Midwest yeah. Model Railroad, who is sells all the AML merchandise out there in Independence, Missouri. Uh, Midwest mm-hmm. Model Railroad, uh, and their URL is MidwestModelRR.com, and they sell all the AML merch: hats, mugs, hoodies, T-shirts, man, whatever you could possibly need. And I think they have like well over eleven thousand other things. So they're a brick and mortar shop too, but. I think most brick and mortar shops nowadays have to have a good online presence or they're not going to survive. You're right. And most of them I believe do. Okay. Have something. Right. What what about Al's uh, cycling hobby? Do they have an online uh, presence? You know, and I don't know. I, I I don't think they do. I don't, they don't have I know they don't have a web hobby shop at all. Really? So everything everything is pretty much walk in, yeah. I mean the bicycles are are a big part of their business, you know. Mm. Um especially at the beginning of the pandemic, they couldn't Yeah. I mean, it was like they, Jamie was telling me that for the first, you know, six, seven months, it was like, like Christmas sales every day, yeah. you know? Yeah. Half, um, half the, half the store has bicycles. Yeah. Mm. That's pretty yeah, unusual. Plastic kits and details and stuff. Yeah. It's an unusual shop. It is unusual. And that's, and we've lost several of them around here. Um, so, um, I think it's important that people deal locally first if they can. Because a lot of these guys too, they they're dealing with some of our big online dealers like Walters and and uh, big distributors like that. They they you know I, I will order stuff from them that they will get from Walters that we sold Walters. Yeah, but uh, like Midwest Model Railroad, they only started in two thousand and eleven, I believe, or two thousand twelve, somewhere back there, about ten years. Let's say about ten years ago, and they started as an online business out of their basement. And now they've got a beautiful brick and mortar shop. But ninety yeah. percent of their business is online, and I think for a hobby shop to survive, they've got to they've got to embrace online sales if they really want to survive in, the, in this day and age. 
Sure. Sure. But I think with their, with the bikes and the RC stuff, I think that's the, the majority of their, their revenue. I think model railroading um, is like NASCAR because uh, the, the thing with NASCAR was always their big thing was you could, you could watch your, your car, your, uh, you know, your Ford or Chevy uh, win on Sunday. And on Monday you'd go into the dealership and buy one. And model railroading is, is, in, is unique in that you can be, operating or working on your layout and then go outside and watch trains. Right. So, yeah. so it exists in the, in the, in the world as we, as we speak. Yeah. And in a digital world too. Yeah. I mean, you can go YouTube videos of watching trains go by drone footage. That's some, that's some amazing stuff. Yeah. Out there. Uh, so, so if you, if cost was no object, you'd give them a subscription to a free magazine. Boy, that's, yeah, that's, because cheese, knowledge. that's cheese. That's cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> knowledge knowledge has no value oh, exactly but couldn't you give them one to give them a subscription to like rmc or model railroad news or the editor is T- tony cook our very own tony cook is the editor of model railroad news wouldn't you at least buy them a subscription to a magazine they have to pay for okay if i had to it would be uh, model railroad craftsman okay rmc i, I th- yeah because i think it's of all the magazines i think it's the one that's really Continued to focus on the yes, model railroader and the projects and stuff. It's yeah. a great mate. Do you know who the editor is? Otto, right? Otto Vondrak. Boom. Yeah. Uh, g- doing Man. a great job. Way to go, Otto. You're doing a great job. It's amazing. I'm, I'm so happy to see that magazine survive. I mean, model railroader is, you know, unfortunately, you know, their, their business model, is, you know, is a little different. They're more, I think, uh, broader spectrum. You know, more general interest stuff. They, they've tried to develop personalities. I'm not sure that's worked out all that well. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah. What's your favorite train event of the year, model or prototype? Um, model. Well, what's the event? It's uh, actually, I, I used to do all the shows for microtrains. So I've been to all of them and they're all great and they're amazing. But I, we have uh, our, our little Pacific regional um group uh, has um, these mini meets usually twice a year. They had them before COVID obviously, but um, they were in the area, you know, in uh, uh, I think it's a, what you Bruce would know better about this Eugene South to the border, California border, border I believe. And uh, they have these mini meets They're you know, only a, a, maybe 15, 20, 30 guys yeah. meeting somewhere in a, in a, in a church hall or it's division, fairgrounds division, or something like it's that. It's division one of the Pacific Northwest right. uh, NMRA. Yeah. And I just, I don't know. I just like it because you're just with guys or people, even women. I mean, just, you know, there's no pretension there, just people doing what they can do. And the modeling isn't always all that great. Sometimes it's spectacular, but you're just, you're just with the everyday guy on the ground. And I think you get a better feel for, where the hobby is than going to a giant show where you've got so many people and it's hard to, I think it's hard to focus on, on that. I mean, so it's more about learning stuff than it is about buying stuff. All right. So what's your answer? Is, Kelly, do you have any idea what his answer is? It probably is the, the, lo- the local division meet, the local yes. NMRA division meet. Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Did, did you get that? I Bruce? interpret it. Yeah. I, I, pre- uh, I, I figured it out. Yes. Yeah. I had to make a, I had to do some ciphering to figure it out. Should I send pictures? Um, no, but I mean the favorite train event of the year. Not you know, not the where do you like to ramble around Oregon? It was. I, it seemed... well, no, that's my that's my event. That they're they're mini meets. Okay. It just not happen to be in the same place all the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you were, uh, I got a question for you. If you were stuck on a deserted island, and you could only watch one TV show, you could watch all of the episodes. But you could only watch one TV show on this deserted island. What would that show be? Survivor. Oh, look at you! You're a Survivor fan, are you? Yeah, I, I was. It just kind of got long on a tooth, but yeah, I enjoyed it. Okay, that's a good answer. That's a good answer. I might hire, and I don't think I'd hire you, Kisher. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you for, prefer regular beer or light beer? Uh, regular beer. It's like it's light beer is kind of like driving a Porsche Boxster, isn't it? Um, it's like driving a Volkswagen, pretending it's a Porsche. Yeah, there you go. Even good, salty or sweet? Sweet. Uh, are eyebrows considered facial hair? 
Mm, yes. Oh, okay. Uh, Kelly, what do you think about that? Yeah, I would agree with it. Wow. It's on, it's on your face. Okay. Not fur. All right. <laughs> uh, at a movie theater, which armrest is yours? Uh, usually the one on the right. I think that's what I would pick. What about that's where the Coke dispense? Coke. That's where the Coke go, goes. A little. What about you? Pocket for the Coke. What about you, uh, Bruce? Uh, right. Yeah. Okay. I think that's the right. Yeah, that's a good answer. Wow. Uh, we won't ask Kelly because. Uh, well, you can ask me if you want. No, no, I'm good. Because well, I, I was going to say both. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, do you, I've seen him sit. <laughs> do, you, do you prefer? Why can't he take a picture? I don't know. I can't believe he's like a valuable member of Micro Trains when he can't a take a picture or he can't hold a microphone. I don't know. Yeah, go figure. Huh? That's why we got him out back where it's dark and cold. Yeah. Uh, when you eat ice cream, do you prefer a teaspoon or a tablespoon? Tablespoon. Uh, see, I'm a teaspoon guy because I don't want to eat it too fast. Mm. So you take a teaspoon, you you're eating it a lot slower, and it lasts longer. Unless you don't fill it up. A teaspoon half full or half empty? Well, but a tablespoon is twice the size of a teaspoon. So if you fill it up, it'll be it'll be like four gulps, and then the ice cream will be gone. You don't get worn out uh, shoveling that in your mouth uh, so many times? Actually, a tablespoon is three times the size of a teaspoon. Mm. Well, there you yeah. go. Ah, there so you it's go. even worse. Oh, it's even better because you get that much more in your mouth at one time to enjoy. That's right. Yeah. But then Before it melts. But Before then it, it melts. But then it's over so fast. No, no. You can pace yourself. No. Uh, I don't think I could. It's all, it's all about control, buddy. Uh, yeah. uh, Coke or Pepsi? Coke. Favorite hot dog condiments? Kimchi. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. Bruce? Yep, that's it. <laughs> I put on anything. I didn't put on you, Bruce. <laughs> that's three. That's three. I love kimchi. That's three. Yeah. Uh, what is <laughs> what is kimchi? It's a uh, it's Korean pickled cabbage. Korean pickled cabbage. It's, a, it's sort of the national dish of Korea. Just about everything's it's, built off of kimchi. It's kind of the Korean it's, version of sauerkraut. Yeah. yeah right. Exactly. God. That sounds hotter. Sauerkraut. A lot hotter. That sounds Usually, horrible. But sour, sauerkraut is, you know, is pickled. Um, Kimchi sort of rotted. <laughs> yeah, in the ground. Yeah, they yeah. buried in a jar in the ground for a few days, don't they? In a tray. Yeah. yeah. But it's good. I love it. I I've I just recently, I mean before, true answer would be mustard and relish onions. But um about six years ago I really started uh, we had a Chinese re- a Japanese restaurant here that had uh, Korean owners who had a lot of Korean dishes, and so I got kind of uh introduced to kimchi. And just, oh, I love it. I love it. So I eat it, you know, most days. All right. A dinner or something like that. Um, I got a couple of bottles at work. Yeah. Uh, have you ever met Kevin Marks? We refer to him as hard part. Hard part? Um, no, I've never met him in the flesh. Oh, I watched okay. him tie your shoes once. But, okay. Uh, All right. Um, if heaven, I'd like to meet him. <laughs> if you were a beer can, what size uh, would you be? Foster's. Fosters, yeah, they're big. <laughs> okay, Australian beer. Okay, so what size is that? Large. Uh, I don't know. Um. Okay. I don't so know what size it can? All right. Big into it anyway. Okay. Most but... of my beers draft. All right. <laughs> <laughs> not cooperating, right? No, not at all. Sorry, I'm trying. How many pa- how many pairs of Okay, okay, let's say uh, uh, uh 32 ounces. So there you go. Was that that hard, really? Well, I, you know, how specific do I need to be? Uh, well, what I thought if you were 32 than, ounces. Yeah. Harder than most. If you were a beer can, what size would you be? It'd be 12 ounces, ounces. 16, 32, that kind of thing. Large keg, you could be a keg. What are those other things they call? Uh, not uh, bubbas. Uh, growlers, yeah. Growlers, yeah. yeah. Growlers, growlers, bubbas. Uh, Party ball. Uh, yeah. How many pairs of shoes do you own? Um, four. Only four? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, you probably have a pair of sneakers. A pair of dress. I have two. Go ahead. Go on. No, you go ahead. No, no, I got I got uh, two pair of Converse high tops. High tops? Those are my dress shoes. <laughs> yeah, cam- yeah. And I have a pair of uh, boots. Right. Naked boots, kind of. 
and I have uh, a pair of uh, lace-up uh, leather shoes, dress-up shoes. Right. So two pairs of Converse high tops. Yeah, black and white. <laughs> what does he wear to <laughs> what uh, Kelly? What does he wear to the, the to the plant? I have no idea. I never look at his feet. <laughs> How can you spend that much time with somebody and never know, notice his shoes? I never look at other there. stuff. Oh, God, I wear, I wear, I got a pair of, I got a pair of my boots. I wear. Uh, if if it's the middle of the night, and the <laughs> and the smoke alarm goes off, mm-hmm. after you pair, pair up, pull on your sweatpants, and now the smoke alarm goes off, but it turns out there wasn't much damage, but it was indeed uh, going, and you did notice a bit of smoke, so you decided you better get out of the house. So you pull on your sweatpants or your Joe boxers or whatever. Which T-shirt would you grab before you run out into the street? Oh, probably my Modeler's Life T-shirt. Wow. Save the only ones I keep clean. There you go. Um, what's your favorite kind of pie? Um, well, my mom used to make me a uh, raisin cream pie, and I think that's always been kind of a favorite of mine. All right. That's, uh, that's not it, though. That's not. No, oh. mm. uh, it's PI, the math symbol. <laughs> pi. <laughs> That's my favorite. Uh, pi is pi. Three point one. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Three point one four one five nine two six. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, what's your favorite Bobby Goldsboro song? Um, that would be Honey. Right, and do you That's know all she did? Right. Uh, do you remember what year uh, won the Grammy Award for Song of the Year? I uh, have to be in the sixties sometime. Okay. Not that's, that's not really my genre, but uh, yeah, I think. Well, it's not, we're uh, not asking you. We, we didn't ask you what your genre was. We asked her if you knew the year that it won a Grammy Award. Mm, 64. 68. That's a good guess, though. Mm. Thank you. Um, no, do you remember who sung it? Bobby Goldsboro. Wow. Good one. Uh, if you, you were a superhero, what sort of powers would you have? Um, I think it would be. That no matter what I put on, it would fit. <laughs> yeah, <perfect. laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> Clothes fitting man. <laughs> perfect, okay, si- perfect it. size man. The right size that's man. That's right. Yeah, everything's got to be the right size. Yeah, and uh, do, what do you think your costume would look like? It, it would fit well. Yeah, it would um, fit well. Well, let me ask well, you. A pair of the Comfort Fit Sansa belts or something. Yeah, there you go, like a pair of khakis or something. Now, let me ask you an easier question. Why do you think most superheroes don't have pockets? Um, like, good question. Yeah, That's well. A very good question. Yeah. Were some of them not so good? They were all amazing. This is just uh, the cream. Okay. Yeah. Um, actually, I, I don't know. They, maybe because they're not going to be in it very long. <laughs> that's a good answer uh have you ever had a brush with the law um well federal state or local <laughs> i take that as a yes then <laughs> <laughs> or sheriff street cop or mall cop which In, or uh, 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 how about military <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> that would be federal yes so what's your best yes, uh what's your best brush with the law story um, uh, it was okay. Um, that where I was involved in, not so much as the cop shore patrol, but as a perpetrator, I guess, not even that really. I mean, I got, I got in trouble for, um, I was, we were in uh, Japan, uh, over Christmas one year, Sasebo, Japan. And, <clears throat> um, this is the first year I'd been away from home and especially for Christmas, and, and so I'm wandering around downtown. When, and when, a, when you were with the Marines. Na- well, I was in the Navy. Navy, that's right. Yeah. And uh, um, there was a bar. I heard some music. I heard um, um, the doors playing. And I walked into this bar, and it was just uh, real, it was real narrow, but kind of longish. And it had uh, the walls were pleated like a, like a tuck and roll kind of a thing. And they had a record player with American music. And nobody was there. And... Um, I sat there, uh, and sh- uh, she started. The bartender started giving me uh, akadama, which is uh, uh, Japanese. Uh, it's a plum wine, I believe, and they call it bakadama. That's what she referred to it to. It meant bad for your head, and I didn't pay attention to it. 
but the music was good. The company was nice. I was still the only one there, and I just kept drinking this stuff because it went down so smooth. And uh, next thing I know, I, I wake up out in the gutter <laughs> in front of this bar being manhandled by some shore patrol. And uh, uh, I was soaking wet. It was snowing, and they threw me in the back of the Jeep and drove me to the uh, to the brig because I was out past curfew and put me in a drunk tank for a couple of hours. And um, now I don't drink, right? I mean, I really don't drink that much. I never have, <laughs> you know, I got to pre-qualify this. I'm not like, you know, some swarthy sailor who's uh, got a liver you know, cast in eye. So you got arrested by the shore patrol and got, shore patrol, and got thrown in the back. drunk tank, but you don't drink. Right. Without a, Just this once. Without a, <laughs> without yeah. a, without a funnel. That's my story. Yeah, and then uh, got the next uh, morning, got taken to the ship, and um, uh, basically, carry, I was so badly overhung, hung over, excuse me, that they basically carried me up the gangplank onto the to the 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 uh, quarter deck of the ship and handed me over to the master at arms, who who took me up to the captain and who uh, gave me the stink eye for about twenty minutes, and I had some extra duty. Uh, lost a little bit of money. Uh, yeah, I was I was not representing the United States Navy in the manner in which it was supposed to be represented. So, okay. Um, have you ever been on? Uh, have you? Uh, did that happen more than once? No, no. I learned my lesson. Okay. <laughs> have you ever been on TV? Oh, um, yeah. Actually, yeah. Um, one of the projects I worked on in Florida with some friends of mine, uh, we got approached by a, a director who uh, wanted to do a kid's show, kid's cartoon show using, um, um, you know, uh, old cartoons uh, that were free, you know, the public, uh, they were public av available for free. And so he uh, hired us to build this gigantic, um, uh, like a spaceship interior with a big console. And, um, in the center of it was a hatch that would open. And I, uh, a friend of mine and I made this, this head. It was like a, like Oscar and the Muppets that was all made out of wires, you know, uh, uh, you know, just wires everywhere kind of bundled up. And then they had the eyes and the mouth and the nose and stuff. <clears throat> and, um, it was attached to the, to the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, control panel. And, um, uh, I'm. I had my hand up inside the head, and I was. I was uh, doing the the um, animating the puppet. As it turns out, um, it it was the largest puppet ever made up until that time. Now how um, would how would you know that? Uh, because the director told us. Well, how do you know he knew that? I don't know. He was paying me, so I believed anything he said. <laughs> <laughs> but you know the guy that uh, what was his name? The the guy that was in Police Academy that did all the voices. Oh, uh, um, Bruce. Okay. I got He's nothing. Back. I got nothing. I, okay. Well, anyway, um, he was the the main actor in it, and he was apparently he was uh, uh, banished to to space in the spaceship, and and all he his uh, his hobby was uh, watching um, all these old cartoons, old black and white cartoons and stuff, and so that was the premise of the show. So we did a, about four or five episodes of that with him before I, I bowed out and went to do something else. So. But uh, as far as me and my face being on screen, no, my hand was, but that was about it. Okay. Um, let's see what else we got here. We're almost done, so hang on there. What's your who's your best friend? Bruce Kelly. Really? Oh, jeez. Uh, yes. Wow. Yep. Won't, won't anybody else talk to you? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, he is. I I I love him to death. So okay. Yeah. Well, maybe you could take a, teach him how to take a photograph with his phone or hold up the microphone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. With his mouth closed, we'll start yeah, with that. Yeah, take a break from loving him to death and see if you can get him to take a <laughs> learn, teach him how to take a picture. Sure. Uh, what's your favorite zoo animal? I'd say uh, a rhino. A rhino. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. yeah. It's they're uh, gentle giants when you're not pissing them off. Um. I, I, uh, back in my early days, I worked for, um, <laughs> did some work for, um, uh, Banana Republic stores back when it was a safari store. Right. 
And uh, we used to go out to the fair, San Francisco, no, sorry, the fair, the San Francisco Zoo. Uh, when they were uh, doing medical checks on the animals, they would anesthetize them and we'd go out and make uh, molds of their skin texture. And I did a big, uh, big full size model of a charging rhino sculpt. And we used uh, imprints we'd made off the skin. We made, we made uh, uh, thin latex molds or, or castings to put on this thing. But it was just so cool. I mean, it was the first time I'd been that close to something that big. And yeah, he was knocked out, fortunately. But, you know, he was, his eyes were open and he just sort of acknowledged me and kind of, you know, it was just neat to be that close to it. So I think, you know, I love watching them. I just think they're really cool. So is that kind of the way Kelly is when you get to work? His eyes are open and he just sort of acknowledges you? Yeah, and, and as long as you don't, as long as you don't go into a threat posture, you're fine. <laughs> he hasn't charged anybody yet. So, I, you know. As long as you keep them stocked up with bugles and uh, and peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, uh, it doesn't do you, bother anybody. Do you prefer baseball or hockey? Oh, baseball. Okay. Um, if you were, if you uh, had to choose just one, uh, one of the following to cheer for, would it be the uh, Detroit Tigers, the Toronto Maple Leafs, or the Southern Oregon Spartans? Uh, I'd have to go for Ty Cobb's team, the Detroit Tigers. Okay, well, that's a good answer. They won the World Series four times, evenly spaced out. Uh, they've won some, uh, I think, 11 pennants. It's a, kind of one of those teams where my dad was always a, uh, a Giants fan. and um, San Francisco or like, New York? New York, yeah. He's from Long Island. Okay. And I always liked the teams that just weren't doing all that great. You know, because it was, it was that you know you didn't you weren't you weren't sure they were always good. like being a Yankees fan. What's the point, right? You know, it's like uh, you know they're going to win generally. The chances are much better they're going to win than not. Right. And, and the Tigers are good at breaking your heart year after year after year. They are. They are. That's why. That's why I, would, I dealt with women so well over the years because I <laughs> had so much experience. You know, being crushed after a, a short term experience. So. I, I I just like the Tigers. I, I you know, uh, 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 I was in a little league uh, team when I was uh, ten, and they were the Tigers. They weren't the Detroit Tigers, but they were called the Tigers. So right. I always kind of had an affinity for the team. Okay, um, the Detroit Tigers. Um, yeah, Ty Cobb, sure. maybe Ty Cobb. Yeah, Ty Cobb. That's true. And did, was your dad in the Navy or the Air Force or what? Air Force. Okay, and why did you choose the Navy? Because he was in the Air Force. Okay. And, no, I, as I used to joke with him, I told him I was going to join the service. He goes, you're going to join the Air Force. I said, no, I want to tell you, I want to join the service. You know, if I wanted to wear a uniform and sit behind a desk, I go to work for Montgomery Wards. He didn't like that answer. You, did, um, you don't have to wear a uniform in the Navy? <laughs> oh, 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 No, you do, but you don't sit behind a desk. Oh, okay. I thought you were a, I thought you were a journalist in the, in the Navy. Hmm? Yeah. In, Viet- in Vietnam. Oh, there and everywhere else. Yeah. Okay, so did you do that standing up or like leaning against a wall? Usually hiding behind something. But, uh... <laughs> yeah, how did <laughs> no, you? How, just... how did you? How did you? You were you spent most of your time at behind a desk. No, actually not. No, I was you know on the go, taking pictures, uh, going to different units and stuff. I had I was desk work definitely, but a whole lot more than I would have gotten in the Air Force. I think in the same position. Um, if you were stranded on a desert island with just one person, would you prefer it to be Bruce, the moderately agitated mailboy, the modeler simply known as Kelly, or the evil <laughs> overlord? I think the evil overlord because he'd be an ample source of protein. <laughs> <laughs> More so than the others. Ooh. Ooh. You seem a little more. You have a little more red meat than uh, than uh, the other stuff. Apparently, hasn't think, seen I many pictures. Of a lot longer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he hasn't seen many pictures. <laughs> everything exactly. Uh, what's your favorite? Po- but that's okay with me. Yeah. What's your favorite <laughs> podcast? Uh, AML. There you go. Uh, hmm. uh, have you listened to all the episodes and some of them twice? Um, not twice yet. I've listened to a bunch of them. Yeah, okay. I don't, I don't have the kind of, uh, long legs Kelly's got when it comes to listening to some of the stuff, but, um, uh, yeah, I enjoy it. It's nice to hear what other people have to say. Well, how come the last yeah. time we interviewed you, you had no idea what the ending was? Uh, you know, there's, I have to remember so much every day. Oh yeah. You're so much. I just, you know, some stuff, I just kind of, I just go with it and you're I'm so sorry, much, yeah. yeah, you're so much busier than everybody else. Apparently. <laughs> sleepy, sleepy, smoking sleepy Joe D'Amato. Yeah. 
<laughs> well, uh, I'll go first with the scoring because I've got some copious notes. Uh, the landscaping answer bothered me a lot. Because mm. that's one of the things started to go off the rails. Is he stopped? He didn't seem to be able to answer the questions the way they were worded. You know, it was uh, you know, it was like, what's your, what's one of your favorite uh, things? Either bench work, track work, scenery, or electrical. And he spits out landscaping. Like, uh, we're not at the Medford uh, Railroad Park. Do you know anything about this whole radar thing that uh, Kelly's going to do? <laughs> the radar. <laughs> uh, do you know anything about that? The radar? Yeah. No. <laughs> so you've sure. never heard of it? The radar at the club? Yeah, obviously you're well, not. I know, we, I know we have, I know we have um, speedometers there. It, it, apparently he's far. bought he's bought some what he can thought was a radar gun, and it's actually oh. and, and, and to, for the uh, for the, the live steamers. steamers. But you can oh yeah yeah that's right because they're all they're, they're it, all uh, heavy footed. But but you can shake it like an eight ball and it'll come up with whatever speed it it wants. So it can be anywhere from <laughs> forty five to two. And then he says he's going to have this thing out there. Like, is Kelly just like, is Kelly secretly just annoying the crap out of everybody over there? Um, well, you know, he does so much. We don't want to, you know, piss him off and make him go away. Right. But that's not, uh, that didn't answer the question. Well, then, well, yeah, it did. It's, I mean, he's we so put he, up with a lot. Okay. <laughs> uh, he's, 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 he's everywhere. So, yeah. Do you have any other members? He no, he, just us. Years ago, he tried to give me this uh, hokey story that he didn't. He was kind of an introvert. He didn't. He didn't really talk to people. And then the next thing I know, he's uh, running everything over at the Medford Railroad Park. So it's kind of like it's very hard to. Um, the next answer that bothered me was, uh, "What's your favorite cereal to simulate an open load?" And then you get, started talking about sugar beets. All you had right, to say, open load. all you had to say was Rice Krispies. That's all you had to say. To simulate what? Hey. Eh? Hey, <sighs> eh? huh? Um, hey? then the uh, mini meats thing. Then right after that is what's your favorite um, uh, event of the year? And then we had that, this big long explanation about you driving around the the state of Oregon, uh, meeting up with uh, twenty five and thirty other guys. But we never did figure out which which event of the year until somebody else helped you. Had to jump. See, the problem is too many people had to start jumping in and helping you define your answers it takes a village and that's that's a that's a huge <laughs> no-no in the kelly questions and then you came up with uh, you know your hot dog condiment was kimchi which is kimchi old, yes old cabbage you said mm -hmm. old squishy <laughs> cabbage it's good and that's then stinky stinky cabbage have you ever tried it uh, kelly no no it's it's uh, <laughs> i think it was in a it was in a um, uh, episode of mash where they they had found that container in the ground. Yes. Mm -hmm. and in the old days, you used to bury it in clay pots. Yeah. Oof. Jeez. And then it's, Bert, it's called in the bomb squad. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and then I asked her what size beer can you'd be, and you, you blurted out a brand, which made mm. no sense to me at all, because I'm sure Foster's comes in a variety of sizes. No, it only comes in one, actually. Yeah. Don't push me, Kelly, or don't push me, Demato. <laughs> hey, you have to play me. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? You know what? Okay, actually, you know what actually, is, don't I, I, push you, me you either, Kelly. <laughs> you forgot to provide a user's guide to these questions. Okay. No, Why? <laughs> There's obviously a certain answers that are acceptable, and others that aren't. Well, no, it's just to try to try to follow along. Okay. So it seems like there's a bottle. There's a large can. There's smaller cans. So there's several different sizes of fosters that you can get. Well, all I ever see are the big cans. So okay, well that's because sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> so, anyways, my well, first thing came to my, mind, okay. my score. I don't think I've ever given out this score, but my score is zero point one oh, out of a hundred. <laughs> uh, Bruce, would you like to go next? Yes, sure. I'll give her a shot. Uh, I actually, found, I, I found a lot of his answers to be uh, refreshingly different. Uh, you know, his uh, you know kimchi, that's one I wouldn't have thought of. But, you know, hey, kudos for trying something different and not going with the uh, the horde who, you know, miss, 
had the uh, misinformation that ketchup's no good on hot dog. He's a free thinker. So I gave him super marks for that. Uh, I like the answer about Rice Krispies for sugar beets because a lot of people wonder why would you pick Rice Krispies? And he, he explained to us why he picked Rice Krispies. Uh, the mini meat thing, I can understand what he was saying, but it was kind of, you know, spinning one tire in the clay there until he got pushed and got going. So uh, he lost a few marks there. Uh, nice story about drinking and not drinking and getting ridden up by the shore patrol. Uh, that's uh, that's good. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it shows uh, some initiative on his part, I guess. Uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, yeah, the Tigers I like the Tigers. You know, the Georgia Peach, and you know, we're still hoping since '84 they're going to win again. And uh, mm-hmm. sure. uh, who else we got going? Yeah, so let me do cipher in here. Uh, uh, I'm going to give him a two point two two. No, oh, that's pretty good. That's a lot more than what I gave him for sure. He under- he gets me. Yeah, but he he, he annoyed the living <laughs> piss out of you. So there it yeah. is. So that's why <laughs> you have to take you have to take that factor into account. Yes, <laughs> annoyed the living piss out of Lionel factor. Yeah, yeah. They're okay. All right. Uh, it's, it's a craft. Yeah, uh, Kelly. Well, you know what the Tread AML lightly here. Tread lightly. The L- yeah, right. Uh, the <laughs> AML network. We're we're trying to find in- innovative ways to do scoring, and I decided to use the uh, radar gun that I use out at the park. <laughs> And it starts yeah, out at zero. That'd be good. Yeah. yeah, it starts out at zero, and if it gets up above six, uh, he gets a ticket. Um, but he uh, did quite well. He, one of the things I saw was quick response on a lot of the questions. You know, most of the contestants uh, they're, they're slow on the in, in, the uptake, so uh, um, that, that was that was good. The thing about kimchi was a unique. Uh, let's see if there's anything else negative. Negative. <laughs> the Fosters, they it should have been just a large can. Uh, baseball, eh, should have gone to hockey. Uh, I think that's about, there was one other one, but I didn't write it down. So I came out with a 3.35. Nice. Wow, nice score. Yeah. So that way, Friday, I'll be okay. I'll get my free yeah. lunch on Friday. <laughs> right. Kimchi on your hot dog? No, no. So in, it's so good. You guys should try it. It's so good. So in New, in New Jersey, you can get Fosters in a twelve ounce can. Uh, let's see what else can we in uh, in Washington State. You can get it in a seven hundred and fifty milliliter bottle. Um, mm-hmm. in DC, uh, it's also a seven fifty milliliter bottle. Uh, in Massachusetts, you can get it in a twenty five ounce can. So there's several different sizes of fosters. So can I make my score lower? <laughs> no, I think it's once the scores are in. Yeah, once it's good, that's it. I ah, can't okay. change it. Uh, so anyways, let me, okay. Let me check my Patreon account here. How low can you go? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> yes, we did. We thank you, Joe, very much for your Patreon uh, support. That's uh, very nice of you to do that, for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, my we, pleasure. We... Uh, <laughs> 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 so uh what's next in the in the life of joe give us one thing that you're looking forward to in the next year well um i think the main thing is my middle daughter is going to get come up here and get married how many do- so, how many daughters do you have five five so wouldn't there be yeah. three middle ones well she's one of the, one of the middle ones i should say i'm sorry okay yeah. So she coming to Medford to get married? Uh, no, we'll, we'll probably do it in Eugene. She's down in Arizona right now. Um, real nice guy. Got, I mean, got a good picker. So why, why so, would, why would they travel to Eugene, Oregon, to get married if they live in Arizona? Well, they're just down there temporarily. Oh, okay. They travel all over the world. You know, they were in Australia for a year and a half, and and in the UK and Asia. <clears throat> They, that's pretty much all they've ever done really is travel but she's got a job working as a uh, 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 working for a, a um, like a mortgage company doing uh, paperwork and stuff for them and the, the main office is up here in uh, northern Oregon right so they're going to come up so the whole family can they've, they've gotten married for his paperwork and stuff but they're going to come up here and have a where the whole family can get together and oh, okay. celebrate so do you yeah. think you'll invite Kelly in a heartbeat. Okay. He can shave him, soap him down. I'm sure he'd be presentable. All right. Okay. 
Yeah, I'd love to have him there. Uh, Kelly, can you give out our email address? Yes. Oh, geez, I just threw it away the piece of paper, too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's see what I wrote down. I wrote something down. <laughs> oh, yeah, wow. Memorized. You research it for a change. Yeah. So if you yeah. want to reach us by the wonders of email, you can reach us at modelerslife at gmail.com. That's modelers with one L like sleepy smoking Joe, not two L's like Kelly. There you go. That's not bad. That's pretty good. Whoa, fast on your feet. Yeah. I had, I've been practicing. Yeah, he has okay. to practice for every every time he does it. And uh, we also have a website, amodelerslife.com. And if you go there, you can also click on the moderately agitated boy uh, boy's face when he's in a particularly agitated state and get it directly uh, send an email to us. And you just click on that face and boom, all you got to do is fill in the text. The rest is done for you. And uh, we've talked about Midwest Model Railroad, which is where you get all your AML merch, hats, hoodies, mugs, T-shirts. We could add other stuff to it, too. And plus, they have a wide variety of Model Railroad products. Um, let's see. What else is there? Anything else, Bruce? Oh, and here, another thing, too, is uh, uh, we're uh, asking everybody not to order from JL Innovative. Their uh, uh, detail, their uh, supply details for... Um, Model railroad details like barrels, all the little details that really make a scene pop. And they have an mm -hmm. excellent line of details. It's just great. But we're begging you. We're begging. I beseech you. We're begging you. Don't order from them at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, that means he builds his stock up quicker and you're out of lunch. Yeah, I that don't think sure. that's ever going to happen. Uh, yeah. Because the, the orders are coming in fast and furious. So I said I, I would uh, try to help out. And uh, ask people not to order from them. He has some nice kits too. Well, they have some yes, great kits. Yeah, they have some beautiful yeah. kits, and mm -hmm. they have yeah. kits and detail parts, and they have a ton of great stuff. But we're begging you here at the AML Network. We're begging you, please don't order anything from them. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, for me. <laughs> um, what else? What else is there? I think that's it. That's about it. Yeah. Uh, so, Joe, are you ready to take us out of here? Is there something I have to remember again? Oh, my God. <laughs> you got two options. He, 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 he claims he listens to the show, but he has no idea what to do next. Oh, come on, you know. Or come on yourself. I, I, <laughs> Once he starts, you should be able to figure it out. Yeah. Uh, so remember, remember, a Modeler's Life podcast is considered marginally adequate by six out of ten. Mouseketeers. Oh. I laughed at her and she got mad The first day that she planted it Was just a twig Then the first snow came and she ran out To brush the snow away So it wouldn't die Came running in all excited Slipped and almost hurt herself And I laughed till I cried she was always young at heart, kind of dumb and kind of smart, and I loved her so. Transportation for AML guests provided by Diamond Limousine. Diamond Limousine, where all of our vehicles are true diamonds in the rough. It's another Lincoln Homer. I think that's what you went with last time. I know. After, after we beat it, you see, me, I would have, I would have, I would have gone with Foster's Lager Drinkers. No, then you'll you'll pin me on a size. I would, I would have gone with U.S. Navy Shore Patrol members. Yeah, and you, yeah, and U.S. Navy Shore Patrol members. Yeah, or kimchi, kimchi eaters. Yeah, kimchi eaters. Yeah.